let's dig into the indictment itself, the specific charges, and, and notably, as we were just talking about, what we don't know. Joining us now is former Manhattan Assistant District Attorney Jeremy Salan. Jeremy, good morning. Good morning. I find it really surprising that they didn't lay out here what the underlying crime is, because that's how you make it. That's how you make these 34 counts. It would be misdemeanors, felonies. And there, as Paula said, aren't, aren't prosecutors going to have to lay this out? Because how can defense put forward their motion to dismiss without knowing what they're fully trying to dismiss? Absolutely. I expected to see the charges because, generally speaking, you don't see falsifying business records as the only count in an indictment. Right. Because usually it's a mechanism to, to really commit a greater crime, whether that's a larceny, a tax crime, or here, a crime related to campaign finances or something along those lines. So I expected to see that. That being said, during the discovery process, they are going to have to set forth those crimes. I know, but why wouldn't you lay it out? And this is the, fir this is the first time a pres former president has ever faced criminal charges. Why would you not lay it all out there? It gives me pause. It gives me concern. I would like to think, and I do at this stage believe, that they in good faith obviously have that evidence that they think they have that can substantiate and ultimately prove beyond a reasonable doubt these crimes. But yes, to your point, why not share now, even if you don't put it in the indictment with some specificity? I recall during that press conference, the answer was really avoided. Yeah. Is that part of the strategy, though, possibly? This is, and I've been reading the analysis about, about why not showing a crime. This is a, the New York Times is saying and others, do prosecutors need to convict Mr. Trump of a second crime? It says, no, they must only show that there was intent to commit or conceal a second crime. Prosecutors do not have to charge Mr. Trump with any secondary crime or prove that he committed it. But prosecutors have not yet said definitively what crime or crimes they intend to re rely on to escalate the charges to a felony level. So they don't have to show just an intent. That, that is absolutely a fair statement. But again, back to what I said initially, you generally don't see falsifying business records, the sort of the means to commit a greater crime by itself. You see that with another offense or other offenses. So even if it's not pleaded in the indictment, I would expect to know what that is because you're going to have to come and share that because he has a right to defend himself. And because of the nature of who we're dealing with, the former president, the public should know that this isn't political and we want to know what it's about. Share that with us. Well, and the timeline here is obviously important too because there's not another court date until December. The judge mentioned yesterday maybe a trial in January 2024. Trump's attorney said it would at least be spring 2024. That's when he's going to be going to Iowa, to ah, New Hampshire. Okay. He's going to be all over the place in the middle of this campaign. Do you think this is something, based on what you saw yesterday, that a judge will dismiss, maybe? I think that's a big leap. It's way too early to make that determination. When will they make that determination? So generally, what's going to happen now, within the next few days, whatever discovery has already been provided, in the weeks ahead, more discovery will be shared. So the defense will know, well, what, this is what we're facing. These are the, this is the evidence. So between now and then, it could be 30, 40 days, maybe even longer to get those first motions in. There could be what's called the Clayton motion, which is a motion to dismiss the interest of justice, mm -hmm. legal sufficiency, prosecutorial misconduct. Who knows what they're going to pull out? but they're going to throw everything they can to try to get this dismissed in the weeks and months ahead. Remember yeah. what John Bolton told you a few days ago? Yeah, as a Republican who does not want to see Trump as president again, that this, they should expedite this all in, in the interest of the public and given that now very long timeline? Well, and they obviously, they think that would be helpful to him, but Trump's legal team yesterday, the new attorney he just added, was saying January 2024 is way too soon to start for, for a case for this. We yeah. have to go through all the discovery and look at everything that yeah. you guys have assembled. I, I think if you, if you were to take the yeah. president out of this equation, that December date is incredibly long. Normally, you're talking maybe four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, maybe longer. That is an extremely long adjournment for that next stage of the process. There's also, the, I know we got to go, there's a new law in New York that a few years old that means that defendants get a lot more discovery Absolutely. and they get to see a lot more evidence, which is really interesting in this case. Yeah, we Absolutely. do have to go, but what do you, why is it extremely long? <laughs> yeah. What well, I think because of the nature of who we're dealing with. It's former president so of the United States. Him. They're right. giving an expanse of time, absolutely. And the judge was saying yesterday Trump needs to show up for all of his appearances, yeah. including that December date. Yeah. All right, Jeremy, thank you. thank you. We'll see you soon. Appreciate it.